early stage seed, uh, which usually means that there is some sort of uh, prototype, uh, not necessarily uh, full revenue, but but some customers that are that are using the product or service, um, and then uh, go all the way to funding uh, Series A and, and Series B, which usually have um, some revenue but but need uh, growth capital. Um, and um, currently invest in, in, in New York City. Uh, so by virtue of that, uh, we're looking at a lot of digital media, financial services, technology, advertising technology um, companies. Okay, so it's mainly technology that, that you'd be focused on? Yes, okay. yes, okay. yes. Thanks for that. Do you see many women entrepreneurs or startups sourcing venture capital coming to you specifically? And uh, what percentage would you find that you fund of women startups? Well, I, um, I I think by virtue of being one of the few female VCs out there, I, I end up attracting um, a, a lot of uh, women who are looking for funding. Um, and, and as more and more women start businesses where women are also the primary consumers of, of the technology or service, mm. uh, I, I think the, the number of women um, uh, seeking venture funding is only going to accelerate. And, and so I, I, I've been seeing that happen over the, the course of uh, even, even the past year. So I, I think that's very encouraging, um, and and it has a lot to do with just the the number of women that are using technology. I mean, um, I wrote a, a piece um, in Venture Beat uh, that was just published yesterday on the evolution of the online fashion industry. And if you look at a lot of the startups I refer to in in that piece, who who are creating the next generation of Fashion, fashion and commerce companies. Um, a lot of the founders are are women, so um, I, I'd say it's still a, a, a small percentage of, of the overall pool that I see. Um, and but it's but it's only starting to accelerate. So I, I'm encouraged by that. I am too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I quote from a comment you left on Fred Wilson's blog. Uh, there are many groups in New York City that I have been actively involved with that are encouraging more tech entrepreneurship amongst women in New York, including Girls in Tech, Astia, Springboard, Women 2.0. I have mentored, organized, moderated and participated on countless panels on the topic and have invited men who make up a large percentage of my network to attend, but many do not. We need an inclusive conversation on the topic. One of them was held at Dogpatch, and many of the 2.0 uh, something male entrepreneurs there. Oh, I meant the 20 something oh, um, male entrepreneurs. So um, I'd say the younger generation. Yeah, uh, me. Yeah. Sorry, 20 something male entrepreneurs there attended and commented that they found the conversation enlightening. What do you think needs to happen to encourage men to participate more full, fully with women in the entrepreneurial scene? And what have you found? that works and what doesn't because obviously you've been trying to get them involved well I, I think there are two issues here one is just general networking in the technology space and I, I think that's happening organically as, as more women are starting um, uh, starting businesses and going to these networking events and understanding that you know this is where you can interact with other entrepreneurs and VCs um, that that interaction is already starting to happen so so that's good so I, I go to you know the New York Tech meetup and uh, while it is still predominantly male I still see a lot of women who I know are looking for funding um, attending these events and, and and interacting with other entrepreneurs and um, and VCs so that that's happening I think there's another issue around uh, women and, and first-time entrepreneurs in, in general being able to um, actually close on the deal and get venture funding. And um, I, I think there needs to be a realization that, that men and women are different. I mean, there's been a lot of um, a press recently, and, and I, I have to say uh, my own experience verifies that women are more conservative a lot of times when they're putting together their business plans, and, and um, 
I, in my experience, have often weighed the risks a, a, a lot more, and, and so they'll be more of downside scenarios in their plans sometimes, or if they don't want to overcommit. Um, uh, and and you know, VCs are used to seeing things through a certain lens and, and in terms of plans and, and, and doing their standard haircuts of the plans. And, and so I just think there needs to be more of a, 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 an understanding. And again, you don't want to overgeneralize, but, but uh, there is some rea reality behind um, and some of these real differences. And so those, those were you know, the topics and conversations that I think the men that were in attendance that they hadn't really thought about before, and um, and and found it interesting because you know why 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 would they think about it otherwise unless they're hearing some in extremely successful women there discussing it. So um, so what so I'm hearing is that you in a way what works is actually sort of education or or uh, more awareness of the differences that women bring to um, pitching for venture. Yes, yes, uh, the differences um, and, 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 and a recognition of what those differences may be so it doesn't negatively impact them okay. when, when they are out there looking for Got something. It. Got it, that's great, thank you for that. I'm sure uh, other women would appreciate that um, information. Um, what are some of the challenges you've had to face personally to be a female venture capitalist? <laughs> Is there a huge list? <laughs> uh, well, I love the industry. Um, you know, I, I feel extremely fortunate to, to have found something that, uh, that I love doing so much that often doesn't uh, feel, or most often doesn't even feel like, like a job. So uh, yeah, that's first and, and, and foremost. Um, yeah, I think um, it's always interesting to be the only one of anything in, in, in a room, and um, um, and you know there are times when I notice it, and there are times I don't. But I'm often, uh, most often, the only woman on a board. Um, I do think I bring a different perspective. Um, that's being a woman, being a um, a, a minority. Um, and you know, there's a whole set of experiences um, I bring to the table. Um, you know, and everybody brings their own. Um, but but there's not enough of me, I, I believe, um, you know, out there, in, in terms of perspectives. So, um, and 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 often having to um, to argue more for that perspective or, or, or recognize that I'm going to have to sometimes work a little bit harder to get others to see that perspective. But, but um, to me, that's a small price to, to pay for, for you know, doing what, what I enjoy doing. And, and being a pathfinder, you've obviously got that, um, those qualities and abilities to break the ground for other women. So um, that must also fire up your passion, I would imagine. Absolutely, absolutely. It's 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 the number of women who write me every day um, uh, from around the world, um, uh, you know, talking about how they heard me speak, or if they saw a clip, or if they read something that inspired them, um, or I put them in touch with some somebody that was helpful. So, um, so to me, that that's a huge part of of my work and and uh, what I can do to to help. Them.